Hi guys and welcome back to Fabric Fridays with me, Mary Morningstar Johnson from Ruby and Violet Designs. I'm excited to talk to you guys today about how to develop a pattern to sell either on your website or in your Etsy shop. Um, I am not necessarily an expert, but it is something that I've been looking into myself and I've just been taking resources from lots of different places. And so I just thought that I would share with you guys um, where I'm at in my pattern and um, my steps that I have kind of come up with myself um, in how to develop this. So I hope that you guys enjoy. Step number one. So in this first step, you're going to want to design your block. Um, I use just a sketchbook and my sketchbooks generally tend to have graph paper in them. Um, I save uh, inspiration and I keep all of my ideas written down and I think that graph paper helps when designing quilts because you can make notes as to sizes and it helps you jot down to a lot for your seam allowances and that's just something that I've always done. Um, I, I know that some people it's hard for them to remember or think about seam allowances. Um, I think that my background in sewing up garments, I think that I mean, it was definitely hard for me to switch from a 5 8 seam allowance to a quarter seam allowance, but now that's just sort of, I guess, how I've hardwired my brain to just think in quarters. Um, and I basically just, I, I have my own system and you'll probably develop your own system, but I just count and I just know that when I, when two pieces are meeting up together, I know to account for a half. If it's the edge, I know to do a quarter. So. That's sort of just my little go-to rule that I use when I'm writing out my designs, but graph paper helps because you can determine how many inches you want one block to be and go from there. Plus quilts tend to be pretty geometric unless you're doing something like paper piecing or um, if you're sewing with a lot of curves. I don't, I don't do either of those things too often if I'm paper piecing, which I do love to do. Um, I'm generally working off of a pattern. So for right now, I'm just sticking with a little bit easier designs. So anyway, um, definitely, I don't know if it's my illustration background or um, or what, but I, I just prefer the paper and pencil method. Uh, some people have computer programs and they design off of those. I just really do prefer paper and pencil. So um, if, if designing on the computer is something that is comes easy to you and you would rather design your patterns that way, that's great. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think just getting a piece of graph paper and a pencil and a ruler and you'll be good to go. Step number two. In this step, it really can be interchangeable with step number one but it's picking your fabric. If you're a fabric designer, you probably already have, you know, your fabric that you're going to use and you've probably even already thought of a design that you want to do. If you're not a fabric designer and you want to move forward with designing your quilts, I think that picking your fabric is the most fun part, at least for me. And in this pattern, I actually talked about it um, several videos ago. Um, I'm using Tula Pink fabric. I am in love with Tula Pink fabric. I did my last video on Tula Pink fabric. This video, I'm not using any of the line work in this pattern. This is all just her colorful, um, not that line work wasn't colorful, but th these are all of her colorful prints and not all of them, but a selected version of them, what I could find. And, um, so definitely picking your fabric is a next important part. Sometimes if you're somebody who sees the fabric first and 
wants to think of the pattern later, there are definitely some of those people and I tend to do that occasionally. Um, in this case, I had kind of come up with this pattern and it just seemed to me like tulip pink fabric would be the perfect fit for it. So um, anyway, I think that step one and step two can be interchangeable, but again, that's, that's totally up to you. Step number three. So in step number three, you want to actually make the quilt. So what I like to do is have a big design space, depending on the size of quilt that you're going to design um, and sell. And I like to lay it all out. And sometimes if it's just one block and it's repeating, that might be, you know, maybe it's not necessary to lay out a super elaborate design wall. Um, in this specific quilt that I'm designing that I'm gonna call Ode to Tula, um, I wanted to lay it out because I wanted to use lots of her colorful fabrics and sometimes it's hard to know what those colorful fabrics are gonna look like next to each other and within each other. So I wanted to sort of lay out, um, you know, the color of the hearts, the color of the stripes next to it and then this big design block that I'm going to use to actually showcase specific sections of her fabrics. So um, I think that gridding it out with this, it's this is um, like a seamstress tape. Um, I just pinned that to the board and measured it out and then I also included my border at the top. So as I get down below, um, I didn't have quite enough room to make the queen size quilt size that I wanted. I think it's about two rows short, but that's okay because at least if I can get the top section started and be pretty good with that, I think that I can tie in the bottom two rows of the quilt. So making it is really important too because you're not gonna be able to write out a sensible pattern in my opinion, without making it, knowing your sizes, learning as you go as to what to avoid and what to do. And when you're writing out a pattern, knowing exactly how many five inch strips that you're going to need and um, just the, the little parts and pieces that you don't think about until you're actually into it and making it. Step four. In this step, you're going to want to write out your pattern. So at this point, you have made the quilt, you know your sizes of your blocks, you've accounted for seam allowances in between your blocks, you know what your border is gonna look like, how big it is. You're gonna have all of your measurements and have it all made and you will have already learned from all of your mistakes in making it. So now it's time to write it out. Writing it out can be maybe the most challenging part of designing a quilt. Some people hire pattern writers. Um, some people just write it on their own and wing it. But I think that, you know, just sitting down and kind of going through your steps and starting with um, how many pieces that you need to cut and what size are those pieces that you need to cut. And if you've sewn quilt patterns before, maybe reference those as to how to lay out your steps. And just take your time and, you know, type it all out and then revise it. And um, that will lead us into the next step. Step number five. In this step, you're going to want to have people test your pattern. You may feel like your pattern is perfectly written and that your steps make perfect sense because you've looked over it 10 times. But I guarantee you, somebody will read that pattern, they will find just small little spelling or grammar errors, they will find an area that makes absolutely no sense to them. And I think that that is the importance of having pattern testers is because if you're wanting to sell these patterns to a large audience, you can't always know how other people are going to interpret your information. 
So having people test that, having people read it, and having people work it out, they will find the kinks because they don't know it as well as you do. And sometimes if you're like me and you look at things 10 times, you see what you want to see instead of seeing what other people are going to see. And so having pattern testers is a really important step and I would not skip that step at all. Step number six. So this is the final step of developing your quilt pattern. You have designed the blocks, you've picked your fabrics, you've made it, you've written out your pattern, you've had people test it, and they've given you all of their feedback. So now it's time to take that feedback that you received, revise the pattern, make the revisions that you feel are necessary. Maybe they are just spelling and grammar errors. Maybe some of them you needed to take information out because it was too much or add information because you didn't give enough information on how to complete a step. So whatever those revisions are, complete those and get your pattern printed. You could print it on your own printer, you could take it to a printer. You wanna take a really good photo of your quilt that you've designed. So um, when you get it done, have a well lit area, take really good photos of your quilt and maybe make that the front page of your pattern. Something eye-catching, simple, that people will be drawn to and they'll see it and want to make that pattern. And once you do that and you get it packaged up, you're ready to list it on your site and sell it. So I hope that this maybe helps. I hope that maybe I've taken a little bit of the mystery away as to how people get from point A to point B. I know that I've spent quite a bit of time researching this, trying to simplify it, trying to um, make sure that I'm completing the steps that I need to to design these patterns. And I, like you, am also hoping to start getting some patterns listed on my website to sell. So be looking forward to that. Um, hopefully Ode to Tula, my goal is to get it done by the summer and have it available on my website. And one other thing that I forgot to mention is sizing. So when you put out your pattern, people are going to be interested in everything from a baby quilt to maybe a king size quilt. So you need to decide, are you going to give revisions to your pattern to be able to size a baby quilt, a queen size quilt, a twin, a full size bed and a king bed. Do you only want to just do a queen size because that fits your specific design? Um, those are also things that you should probably think about. Um, I know that a lot of people when they're choosing a quilt pattern, they like to have that flexibility with being able to make it into a baby quilt or make it into a king size quilt. But you know, maybe that doesn't work for you and you just want to design queen size quilts and that is totally fine. That is up to you. Um, but that's definitely another area that you should think about because you'll have to figure out the math to size that appropriately for those specific size beds. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode of Fabric Fridays with me, Merry Morning Star Johnson. Bye.